welcome to a patch walkthrough of Enter the Ball. We've got little things happening with. We've got my flats. Playing one of the main melodies here. We've got the Moog Mavis down here. Giving us bass. Mini Brute uh, giving us random melody from YouTube. We've got a super simple sine wave kick drum. And we've got some noise percussion. The star of the show, though, is the Bard Quartet. Handling all our sequencing of all of our pitch voices, uh, and also changing a few of our harmonies. So I've got these, uh, the song set up in sets of three harmonies here. This first one here goes between kind of a C minor shape between the voices, to an F minor. C minor, into a G, or well, I guess it just went back to a C minor, didn't it? But then later in the song, I switch it over, or I guess you should say, the harmony is being changed by one of my tracks of my very But then I can swap it on to step four here, and suddenly I get a different set. Where I've got mostly G's and A flat chords. G chord, G7 with different voicings. G7 with different voicings, back to A flat. So this one's now going to be step four, step five, step four, step six. Now I can bring us back to one. And we're back in our C minor. So, so this guy is brand new and I love to mess around with him. So let's see how this thing gets everything to all its places. Let's bring some of these back out. And here's plants. So Platz is on the first of the new orange modes, uh, which is the classic wave shapes with a filter. Um, just pinging the filter every time it gets triggered. It's just being straight up uh, sequenced by my variegate. Um, pitches from one and uh, triggers from the other. Of course, going through the Bard Quartet. And this is its channel here. You can see the chord changes that it goes through. On the channel when it's just on the C, more interesting things are happening on the different voices, which is what I really love about this Bard Quartet. You can send the same sequence into it, but then limit what it does so you can choose which voice is more interesting at any time. And here's it in its B section. So all of its triggers are coming from channel 2 here, the variegate. Uh, and all its pitches coming uh, out of channel one through the bar and then into pots. The Our next voice is the Moog Mavis, another new one that finally arrived from some Christmas money. Let's bring it in. So, 
The Moog Mavis here is oddly enough, even though on several of these spots it's just holding a pitch, it's actually being sequenced by this synced ramped LFO for this part right here. Have a listen to this. So on these steps it's just holding a single note. C. But then, since I'm using that ramped LFO, when I add more notes, it does this. So, a lot of fun. So what's happening with the actual voice itself? I have the pitch coming in, obviously, um, but I actually have the LFO also tuned up to that root note. And they're being mixed together then on the onboard mixer um, and sent down here. I also have the um, sample and hold sent into the gate, which sometimes does some interesting things with the envelope. Um, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, depending on what note uh, is playing. Uh, and it's all working out. The cutoff then, though, is all being controlled externally from my mass channel one. So to cycle slowly. of the Mavis then is, I, I did this originally because it was just a little quiet and I wanted to boost it, but I loved what I ended up doing with it. I malted the output um, to two different places. One goes straight into my mixer here. The other one first comes into my three sisters, into the all input, um, where I have FM craziness coming in um, with the quality turned up kind of high to give it some really interesting things about it. So what that's do coming from is channel 4 minutes, which is set to cycle um, from my variegate here. So when this starts cycling, on a decently fast cycle, the Three Sisters FM starts going crazy. And that comes in then over here. So section you can really hear the dissonance between uh, the actual VCO and this tuned LFO that's just on the root C that doesn't get changed in pitch. If I take that out it sounds a little less harsh but if I leave that in it's got a lot more harshness to the sound because it's clashing against this that's just droning on a C. So that's our bass sound, split into those two ways, underneath the pines. Final melodic voice is from the mini brute, and the most playable of them all, uh, because it comes from LFO2, that sync to the beat, and most of the time on stepped random voltage. thing about this is that this is where the trigger out of the bar is going into the ADSR and AD as normal on here, controlling the filter and the VCA. I do have the VCA turned up some, so it does drone even if these aren't kicked off, um, but they give the extra attack uh, and the extra um, filter cut and stuff. The fun thing about this is on, on the A section here, you can see the trigger going mostly whenever this changes hooks. Um, but in the B section, it's actually getting triggered not by when it changes notes, but by when the Mavis is changing notes. So it gives some weird rhythms to it. Um, 
so that they trigger it up. is when the mavis is changing that, so it gives a really interesting rhythm to it, because that's just when this ramp wave is changing between the rhythm, which is not scary. And then, of course, I, I was playing live the shape of the LFO and the speed of it, so I can get... Another thing to note about how this is set up, um, I'm using attenuator 1 here um, to slightly turn down the voltage of LFO2, and because attenuator 1 is normal to the cutoff, I'm getting a little bit brighter of a sound uh, on higher notes as we go. And I guess I didn't even point out, I've got both LFO1 and LFO, uh, VCO1 and 2 going. VCO is 2 an, an octave higher, if we can hear it. Thing left uh, to speak of is my drum sounds, which I had to get really creative because I've used all of my normal oscillators. Um, so what's actually giving my bass drum sounds here, which are kind of hidden under things, if you pull this back out, which is really simple percussion here. I had to be, uh, the only oscillator I had left is these wonderful mod tracks on the Mini Brute um, can do uh, LFOs. So this is a sine wave LFO that's just tuned to 63 hertz, which is slightly out of tune of everything else. I could have gone through and made everything else in tune, but on the sine wave version, it wasn't very obvious, so I just left it. Uh, and then that's actually being VCA'd by my LFO1 which if you remember is actually the one that also controls the pitch of my Mavis, but it's in uh, time with uh, the B. So I just let that do my, my bass drum. Mostly the Mavis is on single notes, so it wasn't that big of a deal. on these spots that I got it back to that speed. And then the velocity track of my Mini Brute is controlling my white noise. Set on some envelopes here. That's just being sent up here uh, with the white noise uh, coming in and um, that track um, ACing it. Overall control of uh, that being right here, so I can turn it on and off. Or the other. with my new toys and um, all of that of course being sent through the FX80 which is 
which is currently in the set of two choruses. And uh, there you go. I really enjoyed this. I know it's a super long video, but um, I wanted you to see what I was able to do with this part of the I'm super excited to see what this adds to my workflow and how I can make more musical. So, hope you enjoyed and happy patching. Thank you.